Hi, I'm Briggs Hanati. And I'm Harold Muliati. And today we've got a great guest, somebody who will actually maybe change the way you think about what you're doing. Uh, her name is D or DL Merlin. She's a great voice talent, and I want to surprise you about a couple of things about her when we get her on. Here we go. Welcome to Sounding Great, a podcast dedicated to you, your voice, your recordings, your audio, how you present yourself and how people perceive you. Sounding Great, because you can. And we are back, and we've got with us today, D.L. Merlin. Now, she goes by D, and I'm going to embarrass her a little bit, not on purpose. D is a voice talent. She's, from what I gather, pretty successful. But I talked to her yesterday. We had a really nice conversation, and she's been doing this less than two years. And in two years, I never would have guessed that. I figured she's been doing this 10, 20 years, whatever. Very experienced, been through it all. She has a great website, really good samples of what she does, less than two years. So pay attention today because. He is one of those people who, out of nowhere, can come and make a big difference to the work she kind of does. And, and I think I, that was great. After we talked yesterday, D, I was going, you know, you're a, you're a great motivator for anybody who really wants to do something and, and hasn't really thought about it or, or half-assed thought about it. You did it. And so, good for you. Thank you. Thank you. So, how are you doing today? I'm, a, I'm doing great. I'm a big believer in the do. The do is good. So we call you do instead of D. There you go. It is do Merlin. Yeah. Well, yeah, Mm -hmm. Merlin is full of magic and stuff. So we figured you're you're magical. It's a good thing. That's true. Well, D, you and I had a really nice conversation yesterday. We found out we had things in common. For example, D, D, well, I wasn't in the Air Force, but she was in the Air Force and she was a jet mechanic, a jet engine mechanic. That, that's a pretty cool thing in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Before that, she taught English in South America, in, in Guayaquil, um, Ecuador. I taught, it, I taught English in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I was going, wow, what are the odds? And we both taught at the same exact school, Berlitz. Berlitz is a very famous language learning school. Now, not that many people, you're the only person I've ever met who actually taught at Berlitz and that, that I know of. Um, and it's just an interesting thing because that was kind of how we got some of our training, you know, background by fire. You know, they put you in front of a lot of people and you talk and you have to teach them English by showing pictures and going through this method. Kind of, it's kind of like, um, oh, what's that? Rosetta Stone. It's kind of like that, the method they use, very similar. You see a picture and you go, Bambino, yeah, Bambino. What's this? A Bambina, yeah, Bambina. Um, and it works. Um, and it does work to a certain point. Um, and then you went off, you, you, you got married, lived in Germany a while, you were stationed there, came back. You were a teacher for a lot of years. Yep, 20 years. 20 years, wow. So, yep. and then you decided, I'm going to do voiceover. Yep, it yeah. was a lot easier than kids, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can believe that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> But what I, what I love about what you did is you decided and you just did it. And you did it without, I don't know how you did it, you just did it. And, and mm. I love how far you've gone in such a long time. And that's, mm. you know, a lot of people have been doing, trying to do voice for five, 10 years and they go, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Or I don't know what, what are people doing wrong to you? Because you did it right. I, I don't know if they're necessarily doing it wrong, uh, except that they probably didn't get the right training. Mm. Um, and am I allowed to give a plug to where I did my training? Oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, Gravy for the Brain is a really great um, organization that not only do they have the training, you can get certificates, um, they have mentoring, they, uh, they genuinely care about your success. And so even today, well, almost two years later now, um, well, a year and a half, um, they, I still um, get live mentoring through Gravy for the Brain. That's great. That's pretty good. Now, is this an online program? 
It is online. Uh-huh. They're uh, they're out of Great Britain, and um, mm. but they have. I think they last. They were in. Gosh, uh, uh, I'm going to say the wrong number, so I apologize. But it's at, It's over twenty countries, and they oh. have big, big group areas. So they have. Uh, they have Gravy for the Brain Canada. They have Gravy for the Brain, um, like the Australia uh, and uh, New Zealand area. Um, all the Spanish speakers are Lantum. And uh, there's a gravy for the brain. Awesome. They have gravy for the brain Arabica or uh, Arab speak for Arab speakers. Um, and they just went into Brazil this year. So oh, that's pretty good. I, I think like it, it's so exciting that these two guys that just had a really a real passion for helping voiceovers and the voiceover community started this thing. They're not even very old. I think if they're five or six years old, I'm probably lying, hmm. you know? That's really good. So it might be more than six, but, but it's not, it's not too far in the past. I mean, they, I mean, they've been doing their, their job of voicing and all their producing and stuff like that they do for years and years and years, but great for the brain, their, their brain child here. And I think it's because their heart is always for the voiceover talent to do the very best that they can do. That's great. It's great. And, and you know, we were talking about how this community is one of the best communities for people to get to know each other, help each other. And I have known voice talents throughout the years, you know, three decades, who are more than willing to, to help others, who, to recommend others. Uh, I've met some great voice talents from other voice talents. And, and I'll say, you know, do you know anybody who's like a, a, a male voice talent? I need a good male voice talent. And that's how I met Matt Baker through, through oh, a voice listen. talent friend of ours and, and 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 matt was just kind of starting out in voiceover he had done a couple of years already but he was fairly new at it and he was great and and i've seen him over the last probably 12 years really really just come out of his whatever show he was never really in he, he's getting better, <laughs> and better and but it, but that's the beauty of it watching people evolve and grow and and yet i i've never really met anyone who wasn't willing to recommend someone else which I find interesting. And they do it many times without even asking. They just, it, it's a tight community. Yeah. And I think people help it each is. other. It now, is. I had I've question. already gone out to other. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I had a question for you that I'd, I, I'd been wanting to ask. And this relates, it's, it's a bit of an inconsequential one, I suppose, but it does relate to voice and your background. Now, as a jet engine a mechanic, do you say turbine or turbine? Uh, it's a turbine engine. Turbine engine, gotcha. Mm-hmm. And um, that mm-hmm. kind of leads into a, another thing because this is something that uh, we found that people have different ways of approaching. How do you make sure that you're going to pronounce the stuff uh, in in a, a voice job that? How do you make sure that you're going to pr- pronounce words, particularly, you know, important terms correctly? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you, Harold. The um, I check online. Uh, there are great sites out there. Forvo.com is one. Um, and uh, I, I hit up Google, but Google is a lot of times it's other people's opinion mm-hmm. of how it sounds. Um, and I especially do this with Spanish because I'm not a native Spanish speaker. I just know how to speak Spanish. So sometimes I don't know how to pronounce it. So um, I hit up other people in the community and say, or other people I know who speak Spanish, but you know, in Puerto Rico, they might say it one way in Spain, Mm -hmm. they might say it another way. And where I learned it in Ecuador, it might be another way. So I kind of get what's the, what's the general, whatever. And I also need to know what the client wants. Does the client want it to be, um, if from a Canada perspective or United States perspective, for example, do I say process or do I say process? Yes. You right. Know? And how That's do good. you usually, how do you get them to give you the, uh, the correct pronunciations? Cause we've heard, you know, some people will get want written documents that say, that say, uh, the pronunciation guide info. Some people want, we've heard want, uh, recordings sometimes. People just want someone that they can ask specifically for whatever word it is. Oh, I, if the client hasn't specifically told me how they want something pronounced, um, then I'm searching for it on my own. Uh, then they catch it in an edit and they'll say, well, I'd really rather it pronounced mm. this way 
and then I go back and do the edit. Yeah, because even and I'm, that I'm, happens to me with British when I do a British accent. Mm. Um, I have a wonderful um, author uh, who wrote a very sweet uh, World War II romance, and she wanted me to do all these different British characters. So I would have to do RP, I'd have to do Cockney, I'd have to do whatever. Mm. Um, and so she she would listen and as I would say different things for different characters, she'd say, well, I really need this character to sound more, you know, like he's South London. And I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and books, book reading is its own, own peculiar niche because in a lot of cases, you might not need to do so, so much accents because they might, you know, for other kinds of VO, they, they'll probably just find someone with that accent. But for books, because you're reading the whole book, you kind of have to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the protagonist was American. So she, you know, she spoke with an American accent, but her mother and her father and, you know, it, it was a World War Two thing. So uh, it was it happened in Europe. So there was a French uh, uncle and and the author wanted me to do all the all of the accents. She did like a 25 minute audition of hmm. me. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> Just to make sure I could do all the accents. I'm like Now you've you've <laughs> done I think was it 12 audiobooks? Yeah. Mhm. Mm 12. That, yeah, that's no that's mm -hmm. no slacking feat. Audiobooks are <laughs> a little more tedious as you know to to do there's a lot of editing, there's a lot of work. How how do you prepare yourself to do an audiobook? Do you just have to set a lot of time up? And of course, how do you keep your throat yeah. from getting tired after reading so much? Most um, most authors or publishers give me a long time frame okay. to finish a book. So um, one day I may do a paragraph, and hmm. one day I may do you know five chapters. Just depends on how I feel. Yeah. But I do have to make it sound consistent. So if I've got kind of a, a scratchy throat or something like that, and I and I need to do a, a girl who's like twenty, I I can't do that on that day, but I can do all the guy characters that day. Mm. So that's funny. Uh, and you were telling me also that a lot of the work you get is to do little girls, little kids. Yeah, yeah oh, that's great. Yeah, it's like level up. You did a great job. Oh, and uh, I missed it earlier, but uh, actually. Heather Foster had dropped in the comments and she said, D is amazing. And she put a whole bunch of clapping emojis. Oh, that's great. <laughs> She's wonderful. Yeah. And speaking about giving um, mm -hmm. uh, referrals back and forth, she just gave me a wonderful referral that I'm hoping propels me a little farther along with Spanish <laughs> because uh, I don't get as many Spanish jobs. I've done a couple of uh, public service announcements um, and I've done a book right. in Spanish, but... <clears throat> Um, I don't have got as many Spanish jobs as it would be really cool to have. So, no, that would be that's fun. Yeah, Heather's great. Yeah. She she's a lot of fun too, and she she ah, too, she's, she's so great. And she's been in this like six seven years. Not not that long either. Again, she's she's getting to the top very fast, <laughs> and she does an incredible amount with reading and everything else. Yeah, Heather's great. We yeah, we, it's like it's hard yeah. not to be in Heather's corner. That's what we say. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I agree. She, she's a she's a great person to um, to to be around. She's so positive, and she's got so many great ideas. Now, and like now, you said, this community is like that. They just share all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff. And I'm like, yeah. you know, there's so many communities that aren't like that. They're gonna stab you in the back. <laughs> that, that's true. And you know what? We don't have the ad running today. We didn't run it. Oh, I just, re I just right. realized yes. that we were gonna for people who are interested in some training. You have it local or no? Um, no, I, no. I, okay, I, we'll have to run that later. Uh, but anyway, um, what when you first got into this, when you decided I want to do voiceover, and I, what what prompted you to do of all things voiceover? There were people to saying, "Yeah, you got a good voice," or "You can really do characters," or "You're funny." What what made you get into voiceover? Um, I started reading children's books for my grandchildren because. You know, from a military family, our children also ended up joining the military and they're mm. all over the world. And I wanted to have bedtime stories for my grandchildren to re to listen to their Nana wherever they were at, if they were in England or, you know, out yeah. on the West Coast or whatever. So I started a YouTube channel and I have both English and Spanish books. 
uh, children's books, of course, um, on my YouTube channel and so that they could listen anywhere. And then people were like, you know, hey, why don't you do adult books? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and somebody said, you know, uh, oh, and I saw an ad for Gravy for the Brain. And I just, uh, I, I popped on one day and it was so exciting. And Hugh and Peter from Gravy for the Brain are so um, uh, welcoming that I just, I absorbed it. And then the next month I thought, well, I know a little something. And they said, well, go, uh, people were saying, go um, apply on ACX for mm. books. And I'm like, okay. So you know, then, 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 here I was like a little kindergartner and I uh, applied for a bunch of books and you would, I got every single one. Wow, that's great. <laughs> that is good. So what was your first experience <laughs> reading a book? What, what did you think? This is hard work. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. Now, what, what do you what do you, what do you edit with? I I use a free program, like a, like Audacity or something. Audacity, yep. yeah. I use Audacity. yeah. Audacity. For, I mean, for I'm free, sure. you get quite a bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to go to audition though because now uh, Heather and I were ch chatting earlier, and she was like able to drop in videos and do the sound underneath it and stuff right. like that, which. Yep. I doing audacity so i'm like hmm, yeah I may yeah have audition is audition. good it's it's getting a little buggy that's my only concern i've been using audition for years but it still works pretty well and and we have used that feature where you drop in a video you can look at the audio you can sync it you can pull the audio out you can modify it there's a lot of things you can do that's pretty yeah. cool it, it's a good feature which does cause it to crash sometimes but mm -hmm. you, know, you work with that <laughs> <clears throat> okay <laughs> yeah i've been i've been having uh, well, a lot of crashes on the mac side so i don't know if that's normal and, and and we know um some of the people who work at adobe so we we we're going to talk we had we had a rant about two weeks ago about adobe going come on guys uh let's get this fixed up i mean when your waveform disappears often it's like kind of hard to record when you don't know what you're recording can't see it uh and the levels go away metering and they're on uh guys that's a bug so <clears throat> but we'll yeah. we'll get them we like i said we're, we're gonna have uh i'm gonna invite him on pretty soon jason levine he's the worldwide evangelist for audition and premiere and everything and he's great i know i know jason he does a wonderful job and we're just gonna ask him we're not gonna put him on the spot which is go, what's going on <laughs> help, help. <laughs> little things yeah, well, maybe i'll talk privately to him but <clears throat> it's uh it's well, the thing, but no, Audition's a great tool. Yeah, we, we still use it quite a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's we, a main you know, tool. We, we use it enough to know our gripes with it. Let's put it yeah, that SoundForge way. SoundForge is pretty good too, but I like Audition better. Though SoundForge is not bad. We used that for about 10, 15 years doing, um, doing voiceovers and stuff and, and, and training for, uh, for all sorts of pieces. But yeah, Audition's great. I, I don't think you, you would go wrong with it. Audacity's good for what you're doing right now. It's fine. It yeah. can handle everything. It's really, yeah. great. it's really great for audiobooks um, in the aspect that I just don't need anything fancy. I just need it to record my voice. Right. It's easy to edit in it. I, mm -hmm. It was this really low learning curve. People are like, oh, I just don't understand Audacity. And I'm like, this is one of the most simple yeah. audio tools <laughs> possible. Yep. So if you're just getting started in voiceover, don't spend a lot of money on stuff. I, if you're going to ask me that question, what's my advice to new, <laughs> to new voiceovers is don't spend a lot of money on stuff when you're getting started. Um, but recognize that, um, you need a quality mic and you need a quality recording space. Yeah. And but, you got yourself a very good mic. You spent probably about 300 bucks. And you, you're using the Sennheiser MK4, which is one of my favorites. I love that mic. Yeah. It's a very good, clean, solid mic. And it looks good. It's a nice-looking mic to boot. Um, not a bad choice. <laughs> a lot of people want to go cheap on the mics to start. That's the worst place you want to go cheap. Um, don't go to Get a cheap computer. You don't need much in a computer usually, but you do need a good mic. At least something. You know, spend 200 bucks to, to 500 I think that's the sweet spot somewhere. And there's a lot of good mics at $300, which you can't go wrong with. They're, they're professional mics. They sound really good. And in some respects, they're better than the really expensive mics because you don't need a perfect studio. Whereas with some of like with the Neumann, some of the Neumanns, 
especially expensive ones, if you don't have a really, really, really good studio, it's going to pick up every heartbeat you have, almost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're very sensitive. Yes. And so, yeah, I find that the three to $500 mics are probably right around the best ones. I've got $1,000 ones and more, but I, I still go back more often than not to, to those mics. The, the one I'm on right here is the Sennheiser 416, the MKH 416. This is a very common voiceover mic. It's a great mic. And what's nice about this one is for about 900, 950 now, I think, you get a mic that sounds almost great for everybody. It's, it's such a good mic. Um, and, you know, Sennheiser just makes darn good mics. Yeah, so you can't go wrong. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think you chose a good mic. I've heard the recordings you've made, and they sound really good. I wouldn't have guessed that was an MK4. I thought you might have been on a 416 or something. So it sounds really good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's been a, it's been a process, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. When I first started, some of the things I, I have on my uh, on my website, I keep only because of sentimentality. Mm. Uh, but sometimes I recognize that the uh, sound quality from the, my room or, you know, I was using an older mic and not so good. But some of them are like really cute. Like when I did with my granddaughter uh, and we're in her bedroom closet uh, reading a book and uh recording her so the sound isn't like really wonderful but it's so cute but it's fun hey actually closets are pretty good for people i'm surprised how many people work out of their closets and and they do work it's it's pretty amazing i actually went into my closet yes in the bedroom and and i went hmm so i yeah it's quiet not a sound coming out of that place so I didn't, I didn't record anything, but I was just going, that'd be fun to just <laughs> try this one day, just for the heck of it. I've never, never worked in the closet, but I was going, that yeah. might be fun just to see how it sounds because there's no real reflection coming out of things. And, um, and it, it could be just a fun experience. The closet sort of, mm -hmm. of just stuff. goes to show voiceovers really are the boogeyman in the closet. That's right. <clears throat> <laughs> I actually one time had a I had a uh, an audition. I so wanted it. It was uh, for a uh, podcast or a newscaster for um, uh, U.S. News. I think mm. it's U.S. News. Anyway, um, and I was away on a ski vacation, but I was staying in a youth hostel. This just happened, you know, whatever five six months ago, and I. Uh, I was in this bunk bed, so I put these like blankets down the side of the bunk bed, and then I built this pillow fort inside the bunk bed Interesting. cavity that I was at. Yeah. And I mean, I got like negative 65 dBS in that thing. Wow, it was, that's uh, great. That was amazing in my little <laughs> cave in my bunk bed. <laughs> so what do you do now? You just carry the bunk bed with you wherever you go? <laughs> this is my portable sound studio. <laughs> Yeah, that that would work. Uh, but I did I, I did another one. I got another one. It was for a a video game, and I didn't have a bunk bed. I was at a regular hotel then, mm. and I went in the closet. But it was one of those closets that had like the big roomy whatever. Oh. So it was super boomy. Yeah, it was super boomy, and I was mm -hmm. like, oh my god, I didn't get that job either. Didn't get that <laughs> like, one. Yeah, it's tough. And and you know it's <laughs> tough because sometimes you're just in the wrong place. I tell you, if you want to spend another three hundred dollars, and if you travel a lot. Get the Harlan Hogan portable voice booth. It's Harlan great. Hogan. Harlan Hogan, he's amazing. Um, and he's, he's in his 70s, 75 right now, I think. His voice was so beautiful. It's still not bad. Um, but he's done some great work all over the place. Um, but his little portable booth is, uh, I don't know if Harold's looking up at it right now. I heard him typing. Oh, that would be cool. This is what they look like. As you can see, they're they're quite small, but it's 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 just enough to, to sort of envelop the throw of your voice mm -hmm. and kind of clamp now, down on those reflections. Now he designed it for the Sennheiser 416, which is what he used, but it can work with any mic. So it, wow. but you know, originally it was for the 416 because that's his main mic, I guess, or one of his main mics. But um, he also created a mic that really sounds well, and he de designed it specifically to sound even better with women. It's for everybody. But he always said women have a harder time with mics, especially if they have higher voices. Um, but it is called the, um, I think it's the VO1. The VO1. The VO1 by Marshall Electronics. 
and they 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 label it as the world's best voiceover mic. And you know what? He he may well he may well be right. It it really does sound pretty good. And it's about three hundred dollars, three fifty, something like that. Something like that. Pretty good mic. Well, I don't have. My voice is really low. <laughs> yeah, so you can use almost any mic then. You're good. Uh, but no, that that little porta booth or whatever he called it. What is it called? Porta booth. It is called the porta booth. The porta yeah. booth. I think it's got two versions of it too. Um, the, it really does sound great. I've heard recordings he did for CNN, and then they called him up on a Friday, and he was traveling in a hotel, and they go, "Oh, we need this," and he goes, <clears throat> "He said, not a problem." He gets his porta booth mm -hmm. out, sits down in front of the uh, the mirror, or whatever records it with his Sennheiser and he's done and they go oh thanks thanks so much for going back to the studio he goes you're welcome <laughs> they didn't need to know he was in a house. No, and he played right? both and he said if you could tell the difference they couldn't so that was pretty nice. amazing it's nice. uh, those are those are great little tools <laughs> and uh awesome. no no i've heard your recordings you sound really good and, and your voice is really nice and um, and I have heard your little kid voices and you do those really well. <laughs> I only have, I think I only have one or two on my website, but, um, but <clears throat> I audition for them a lot and yeah. then I get, so I've been, I've been a little girl on a 911 call. I've <laughs> been a, yeah. a, a little <laughs> Japanese girl where I, you know, I'm the, the cheerleader. <laughs> Those are always now, fun. <laughs> now, how did you get your accents? Did you did you just have a good ear for picking up everybody's? You know, people who teach language usually are pretty darn good at just picking up any accent out there. Is that what you did? I, and I practice a lot too. Um, and, and I go since I've traveled a lot too. Like I just went to, I just came back from Edinburgh, mm -hmm. and so and I drive my my husband crazy because every time somebody says something. I'm repeating it so that I can get like uh, you know, how they said. It. And I'm like, uh, he's like, can you just not like experience life without like repeating it? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm not going to get any better if I don't practice. That's right. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but accents are fun. <laughs> I like it a lot, and and that's where I got a bunch of my first books be, because I was uh, I was willing to do all the different accents. But I've done I've done straight books like like uh like my first book was a real estate book. Mm. Huh. Actually, they hired me for one, and they're like, "Oh, this was a really great audition, but we really want you to do this real estate book." And I'm like, "Okay." That's funny. <laughs> well, I just did some public service announcements too for for a county out here, and. The first one I did, they went, I, I just no, you, you sound like a professional. Um, uh, what do you want? <laughs> they said, we want it really conversational. Oh, all right. <laughs> and that means you go from here up to here. <laughs> so you're moving your voice up a little bit. And, and it, was, uh, it was sort of like, as I did it, I go, it just doesn't sound right. But okay, they're happy. They liked it, but I, yeah. I wasn't that happy with it. I was like, uh ah. Don't you want something that's not? No. <clears throat> they wanted it totally conversational. It happens. Sometimes you don't yeah. know what they want until they hear it. And then they go, you know, can you change that? Sure. That's fine. <laughs> yes. That's fine. Yeah. And, uh, and I had to do them in Spanish, too. And I hadn't done Spanish in ages. But it, was, it wasn't hard. It was just, I kept saying, yeah, you, you do realize that my accent is more of an Argentine accent, which is not the same as your Central American or Mexican accent. And they went, okay. As long as you're happy with that, we're good. I try to keep it really yeah. generic, but Argentines yeah. say je, 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 the je, je sound, je. je, 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 you know, and that's a little yeah. different. Um, vaja, no, not vaya con Dios, vaja con Dios. Is it vaja? So, yeah. And I didn't try yeah. trying to do it, do it the other way. I just did it the way I speak, figuring, okay, well, they, they said they're fine with that. Most people don't mind, but it is just enough different. I, I know people from Venezuela, they go cho, cho. It's like C-H-O. It's a different, or cho. it's a very cut Y-O sound. So everybody's a little different. And, right. But no, the accents are fun. Um, let me guess, you repeat commercials when you hear them too. Oh, claro que sí. <laughs> yeah. Of course I do. Yeah, because that's <laughs> the most fun. I, I, I really drive my nuts. Yeah, yeah like, I, I drive my wife crazy. 
I drive my I'm wife like, crazy. I that commercial. Yeah. And he's like, and I do it. And he's like, can you not just watch the commercial? <laughs> I'm like, oh, ah, okay. That's so funny. I do that at home with my wife all the time. We're saying, 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 you deserve a break today at McDonald's. And she goes, oh. <laughs> and goes again. Uh, or, or, oh, oh, what a feeling. Toyota. And so I'll just okay. start repeating the commercial. I find it fun. And then you can start imitating the commercials. I think Harold does it too. He just doesn't talk about it. Uh, his sister Ooh, gave, gave us information. Yeah. His sister gave us information on yeah. him. He does a lot more than we I, think. I, I do a lot more s stuff like that when I'm tired, I guess. So usually uh, earlier in the day when I'm still here, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving uh, Rick the 100% that I get that I give when I'm <laughs> all tired and kind of a little loopy, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, we're trying to really work him to death now so that when he starts when he starts doing his voice, he's fine. He's perfectly fine. He's perfect. He's uh, right in the zone. I got you. <laughs> yep. Um well seriously, D, I, I love your spirit and I love what you've done. And and I'll tell you, in the time you've done it, you you're at the top already. You really are. You've oh. done a great job. And and it's just Yay. oh, it, to me it just warms my heart to see people do that. To to come out and and not let any obstacle get in the way that that takes something that takes a good spirit and you've got it so Thank congratulations you. on that like we said in the beginning uh keep up the good work and you know you're welcome to come back on any time or if you want to come back and do something with us just come on back just give us a call oh yeah we'd love actually, to actually um, i'm working on a new project uh getting better at and voiceover, like anything, you have to practice a lot uh, mm -hmm. because every genre is different. Whether yes. you're doing games or narration or medical or e-learning, mm -hmm. they're all different. And I'm really getting into um, audio description, ah. um, which I, I'm an advocate for accessibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I also read for um, a podcast for Airs LA for the Blind. Uh, which, you know, audio description is for the sight impaired. So um, maybe when that gets a little bit more off the, off the, the couch and into the computer, <laughs> we yeah. can uh, maybe chat about audio description. That sounds good because it's yeah. not something a lot of people do. So that'd be great. Um, yeah. And that helps a lot of people. I know, I, know, I know a lot of people who read LibriVox and they do it. Again, they go to a lot of people who are sight impaired and and that seems to help a lot the only thing i don't like about librivox is people they do something really odd you may have a 10 20 chapter book and you got 20 readers it's just a little bit odd uh, -oh. uh i would find that distracting but that's so i have one friend who does books for them and he's now asking for his own books so he's doing his own because he thought reading one chapter and he's got great gear so when he gets up there it sounds like a real pro and then next guy comes in and goes hey i this is chapter two. <laughs> and it's like, oh, no. Yeah. So you just kind of ruined the book from what he did. When, this is chapter two. You, you, and uh, you, you've got the same character. But suddenly his voice sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's where I think LibriVox, uh, the people do it for free. And he, he likes to volunteer his time doing it. But he's, he's starting to look now to do audiobooks for pay because he's, he's gotten good enough. And he's, he's done a lot of voiceover. But it is interesting because reading one chapter and then oh, it's like, you start chapter one, all of a sudden I come in on chapter two, then you do chapter six. If even, sometimes you only do one chapter. It's a little weird. I, it, yeah, I'm not familiar with LibriVox. I'll have to look it up. It's kind of fun. I mean, it's all public domain books. So, or royal, I, would, I wouldn't call them royalty free books, but they kind of like that. So people mm -hmm. just go back to the, to the classics or other things and they just read them for people. It's kind of nice. Um, yeah, I've heard some that are pretty well recorded, some that are just, oh my gosh, please don't. Um, yeah, we'll some of them are bad. <laughs> yeah, some are just like, no, you're not doing the book any justice. And, um, and I guess you get choices on books, but it's not always sometimes the best voice for the right book, et cetera, but it is fun, but no, keep up what you're doing. And, uh, and D we will see you next time then. Thanks guys. Have a good one. And if you're watching the show, please subscribe. We're going to have a real short show in a couple minutes on some training for voiceover. So stay tuned for that. We'll give you some resources. Have a good one, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Next week, we've got, um, we've got, uh, George Washington, George Washington the, the third. third. Uh, he's actually a friend of Heather's. He's a great guy. We've been, we've known George for about 10, 12 years already. Wonderful human being, uh, great voice talent. And he's also a radio engineer, which is pretty cool. 
And uh, and the week after that, we've got Matt Baker. So we've got great lineup of people from get go to now. It's great. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye everyone. That's a wrap.